everyone. Welcome to a Time Shifters podcast, Time Hop Edition. This is Christopher here with Tom. Tom, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, today, we've got a, a strange film to talk, and it is the strange case of Jackie Kailu. Kailu, excuse me. Uh, you also will find this as just Jackie Kailu. It was packaged to us as the strange case of, but the credits and uh, many places IMDb just has it as Jackie Kailu. This follows the life of a young man who lives in the French Alps with his grandmother. Grandma is a healer and is trying to pass on her gifts to Jackie. It is only the young woman, Elsa, a girl who came to his grandmother for help with a strange patch on her back, that gives Jackie any purpose after his grandmother passes away. He tries to heal her as his grandmother did, but when a wolf is seen lurking in the woods and animals are found slaughtered, Jackie discovers that there's more to Elsa than he could ever imagine. Yes, that is the description, and yes, this is sort of quietly a werewolf film. Very quietly. Like, the werewolf does not factor in as much as one would think. No, I admit, I, I didn't know what was we were really going to be in uh, looking at when I got the description and the email with the screener. Uh, I watched the trailer, and, I, and that's when I was like, oh, okay, there's like a wolf, there's some sort of werewolf angle at this and i think i even i sent you the link for the screener i said werewolf yeah (laughs) Yeah. i was excited and this is a very it's just it's kind of a slow methodical movie it is Uh, and the werewolf angle comes at us kind of sideways like it almost doesn't need to be there yeah i'm curious as to why they even put it in other than to just kind of have some sort of mystery well, it was already kind of funky, the uh, topic anyways, because the, the focus of this, uh, the healing that they do is, uh, as they reference it, is magnetic healing. Mm-hmm. That's that style where you hover your hands over and you have to believe that that does something. You could have gone in some any kind of angle around whether or not that's real. Uh, or that it's having any effect. Essentially, the crescendo of the movie involves um, a more dramatic use of the uh, of his power, for lack of a better term, assuming he did anything at all. <laughs> you could have seen a version of this where they just, they make it about, can he do it? Can't he do it? How is that impacting him? How is it impacting his village? So for the werewolf component, it was just kind of out of place. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I. this was a really odd one for me because I go in and I'm expecting some sort of werewolf film. I'm expecting a court of, especially with the, the uh, distributors that we, we deal with, it's often horror film, sure. horror, you know, and everything. And this is not a horror film really at all no, i mean it's no. a little bit of a mystery it's kind of a romance it's it's almost docu a documentary about like life in a small village in the french alps or the first like third of the film uh seeing them how they live their lives how they get by you know uh their day-to-day you know with grandma as the healer and and jackie who you feel maybe had a a younger life that he was maybe a little bit more of a wild child, but has kind of like come to, I don't know, calm down a little bit with grandma or he obviously has a wild streak in him. Perhaps. I mean, he does have his, his tattoos. He goes out and gets, you know, uh, drunk with his friends and everything, but. Well, they set up even this, um, this backstory, uh, about the fact that he had a traumatic event involving his parents and a car accident uh, which is why he's with his grandmother. They kind of bring that in. They introduce that. That's why he's with her. That's why he's alone with her. But then they just kind of let that lie, too. <laughs> yeah, and they they bring up the idea that, you know, he has, like, possibly sort of a, a, a dream about making music. Yep. But it's a real, like, avant-garde type of of music is it's it's odd it's he likes to use you know uh sounds in nature uh, electronic sounds blend them together uh with his own kind of odd poetry and everything 
so you think, okay, there's going to be like a little bit of a uh, inner tor- turmoil about mm-hmm. whether or not he stays and, and continues his grandmother's work or he tries to go off and, and, and do, do his music and stuff. And that's another thing that just sort of drops. To that end, I mean, I don't, I don't watch a lot of French films. This film kind of exemplifies why that might be. <laughs> um, it, it, it's a style and taste. Um, they have a tendency to be a. They run gambits, but there tends to be a mood about French films. They tend to be a little off color. Uh, they sen- tend to be some kind of like examination of life uh, without necessarily a direction involved. And this was very much that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I have a hard time. It wasn't not entertaining. It was interesting to watch. But I mean, I, I have this thing about the French films too because... Their love affair with accordion music is <laughs> well, certainly is beyond this, me. Certainly, this film uh, use of the accordion was yeah was strong. Uh, and I I will use this as a disclaimer for you. Uh, here are your choices in the tone of this film. You either like the very small amount of accordion mu- music they have, or there is none at all. This mm. is the most silent of films that we have watched. In a long time. Yeah, again, this was, even though this seemed to have a little lack of focus and it just sort of meandered and wandered with in and around a few plot points, I still found myself kind of drawn to it. Yeah, I was a bit fascinated by it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it turns out uh, director Lucas DeLangle uh, who also co-wrote it along with Oliver Strauss. This was his first feature film oh, wow. that he directed. And uh, Thomas Parigi, who played uh, Jackie, this was his first uh, film. I'm kind of impressed with, okay, this is the first time you're in front of the camera and you know how he conveyed himself. It, it actually really worked. I think maybe sort of like that, I don't want to say start sounding kind of like pretentious critic or anything like that, but sort of that <laughs> that that raw talent or the uh, you know the not being quite sure of what you're doing. I think worked really well for the character of Jackie. Well, yeah, no, absolutely, because I mean that was I think part of the point of this is is life happens and doesn't necessarily always make sense, and this you actually almost start. You could put yourself in Jackie's position. We've all had those those passions that we we want to do them. We don't know that we're good at them. We try them. They don't go anywhere. Um, we try to honor family. That doesn't always work, too. Um, you want to be good at something. You just don't know what. His life literally is he's at a transition age. He's obviously early 20s. Um, with not a lot of direction and no, we're watching his family essentially disappear from his life and now he's listless. So this actor being in that situation played it very well. Um, And to your point about trying not to be pretentious, but this did feel very much like your typical art film. You're not certain that it's supposed to make sense, so you think it's better than it is? <laughs> Possibly. I don't uh, understand it, so it must be good. <laughs> yeah. I just, I don't know. I kind of appreciated the subtleness of the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, you know, they, they talk about Jackie and uh, his his music. They have a character talking about, oh, you know, like he hadn't seen him for a while. Have you done have you play you want to come and play your music and you know jackie's like oh i'm not sure if it's for everybody and i i said earlier that that's sort of just dropped but it's dropped i think because he's pulled in another direction because like many of us he meets a girl that sure. kind of fascinates him yep and because i mean this girl isn't involved in the music scene he's in she's involved with wanting to be healed at first by his grandmother 
and then by him. And so that's why he picks that direction. Mm -hmm. uh, Lou Lampros plays Elsa. Um, she actually is a, uh, she's got a little bit more acting uh, credits under her belt. And she's a, a model and an actress. Really unique look uh, about her. Her, you know, the high cheekbones and everything. It's, it's definitely like quintessential French model mm -hmm. kind of kind of look. Yeah, that's stick thin, high, uh, strong features. Yeah, no. But you are, again, like the rest of this film, you're sort of kind of mesmerized by her. <laughs> you can't... <laughs> and, and, At least and, I was. And, and it's good that, that she played her part well and had a presence about it. Um, he played her, his part well and had his presence in the film. Everyone else is essentially almost a stereotype of French film fare. I, I don't know, the doting grandmother, the villagers that don't really have any input into things. They're just there. They're, they're window dressing. Yeah, yeah, there are moments. Uh, most of the, the other characters in the village and everything are just, they come in and they, they do their lines. It's not that they're robotic. It's just... No, like no. they're they're very subdued. No, but that's what I'm getting at is everyone else is essentially an extra. Like even if they have speaking parts, they are window dressing just to have a point of interaction with our two with our main character mostly. Like his best friend in the film is some cop. It, it's actually kind of funny. He's obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then kind of caring and he just plays the he only has to fit into the scene that he's in there's no there's no development there there's no even real reason for us to understand why they're friends the rest of the supporting cast you feel like when they're not on camera are just sitting at a table in their home mm -hmm. yeah. you know that they, they, they have no other life or anything to do outside of what they need to do when they're in the sh in the scene. Well, even Elsa's father, who has at least a marginally stronger part than some, uh, only exists to explain why she's there. I, I think it's exactly what it is. It's just telling this story of this this young man finding his way in life under some very peculiar circumstances at the time. And we're just getting a snapshot into that. I don't think it's intended to be much more than that. We are used to far busier films. <laughs> yeah. And maybe that's why this one's so fascinating for me is because it it does allow the, the viewer to just sort of sit and watch the film without having to constantly look there, look there, look there. What's happening? Right, no, this is an incredibly slow, methodical film that is hyper-focused on the one character to the point where everything else is just window dressing. You're supposed to be feeling what he feels. You're supposed to kind of go through the motions with him and, and understand kind of the pressures he's under, which is why I almost think, like, the werewolf thing is meant as an oddity mm -hmm. um, to just exacerbate the the fact that this is a essentially a kid that's a little little wayward and <laughs> every time he thinks he's found purpose he kind of hasn't and you know what that's kind of life too we all have a purpose we fall go down a road and it either dead ends or it leads to a different road so <laughs> i think that's what this was you're supposed to see a snapshot in life. Yeah, well, I definitely think it's interesting enough that I would recommend it. I'm mm -hmm. not going to say that it's for everybody, and maybe some people that watch it will come back and want to smack me for saying so. <laughs> but I actually really kind of dug it. I, I, I liked it. It, it, was, it was very different. It was interesting. And maybe it's just because it was so different than everything else that we've watched recently, but... I, I liked it, and I'd give it kind of a uh, you know a, a soft recommendation. Yeah, no, I know. This won't be everybody's cup of tea, but uh, it's almost worth watching because it's not. It's it. This is a different culture. This is a uh, this is not an allowed American movie. 
consider it an opportunity to take in something else and cleanse your palate of the other things that we all absorb <laughs> in our day-to-day yeah. lives. Yep, absolutely. But I do believe it is available now uh, on streaming services, so go in a, and check it out if you so feel so inclined. Absolutely. All right, we'll be back in a week with a full episode. Thanks very much for listening to this time hop. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. See ya.